Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I've been sent an exciting orange box of Latte Panda accessories by my friends at DF Robot who make the Latte Panda. Now, in particular, I know inside here there's a 7 inch Latte Panda screen and also a touch panel for that screen, so let's go and take a closer look. So, here we are in the land of a DF Robot Latte Panda unboxing uh, goodness. We just uh, flick this thing open all the way from China. Oh, it's in a, in a polythene bag. Let's get that out of there and uh, rustle, rustle. Open up the bag. Oh, it's always exciting to look at new bits of, of hardware. And in here, as you can see, there's uh, quite a few of uh, these. These are uh, DF Robot's own little uh, heat sinks. I'll try those out in a future cooling video, but we'll get rid of those for a second, because for now we've got, oh, there it is sitting on top, the uh, IPS display for Latte Panda. This is a seven inch display, uh, 1024 by 600 resolution to plug into the Panda. And underneath, it has to be, as it is, this is the uh, seven inch capacitive touch panel, which will go on top of the display. So I think we'll start with the uh, seven inch uh, screen itself. So let's get get inside here, which is just, uh, should be fairly straightforward, even for me. Oh, it's got some packing stuff. Hope the screen has survived okay on its uh, journey from China. There it is, look, oh, this is, this is like serious computing. This is real computing components, isn't it? Nice and, nice and flashy on the back there. And if we just open up a little bag, oh, it opens up the top, look, Chris, get it right. There we are, and uh, there we are. This is the, uh, the Latte Panda IPS screen. So I think it's a uh, high time to try and connect this to the, uh, the Latte Panda. Right, well here I am back again with the uh, screen, but also clearly here the, uh, the Latte Panda. And the Panda has this uh, connector for the screen down here. And obviously this is a wire that has to go into it. So I need to take off this uh, thing, just keeping the wire in place, keeping it, being very careful with these type of cables. They're not designed for consumer use really. So we've got to be very, very respectful of this type of cables. There we are. So that's come off like that. Now, there's also a piece of plastic on top of the screen here, which I can pull off by taking this, this little tag. But uh, because I'm going to take this and put the uh, capacitive panel on top of it in a second. I'll leave that on for now and we'll keep that nice and, and clean for now. So the job I need to do is to get this panel here plugged into, let's pull that over there like that I think, we need to get this plugged into the, uh, the connector on the panda and it goes in that way around, that's the most important part. So uh, what I need to do other than investing in a younger set of eyeballs is to uh, raise the uh, little actuator at the back there like that. And when I take the connector and hopefully slot it in like that, it seems to be okay if you can see that there. And then the actuator has to be pushed down into place. Come on down like this, there we are. And there we are. We've now got the screen connected securely to the Panda. So in theory, we're now ready to uh, test this thing out. So I'm going to connect in a uh, keyboard there, a nice USB keyboard, if I get it the right way up, like uh, that, and we'll connect in a mouse. We won't need those perhaps when I put in the uh, touch panel in a second, but for now let's do this in, in stages. We're also going to want some power, and we want quite a reasonable amount of power, so I'm actually going to use the uh, official Raspberry Pi power up adapter, which will give us lots of power, so we'll connect that in uh, over here like that. You might be thinking, does the Raspberry Pi mind uh, lending its adapter to the Latte Panda? Do you mind Pi? No, I don't mind at all, says the, the Raspberry Pi 3. And so now I think we're ready for a test. So I think we'll arrange the screen a bit like that. And in theory, I should be able, there you are, I'll keep you on screen there, sorry about that. Uh, we should in theory now be able to uh, boot this thing up. So with the camera positions, we haven't got any reflections now. I'll uh, power the panda up, it's all powered up, that's fine. And I'll press its little power button. And hopefully, 
we will see fairly soon something on the screen. Oh yes, there's something on the screen. That's good. Ah, I think the mistake I've made is the thing is upside down, isn't it? Which is, uh, dearie me, looks like it's going to boot, but it's going to boot the wrong way up. You're getting things warts and all today, but it does look like we're going to boot quite nicely into Windows 10. And um, it is a very nice screen, a very sharp screen. This is a, an IPS panel. I said 1024 by 600 resolution. There we are, an upside down version of Windows. I'm not sure I can actually work that properly because that's going to be rather tricky, isn't it? How am I going to get across? Oh, that, this is really, I'm upside down, back to front and everything. Can I launch a, a browser? Um, no, because that's not the right button. Dear me. Now, I think this is going to confuse me too much. So what I'm going to do is to say, we've proved that the screen actually works. And hopefully if I just use the, uh, the magic of the keyboard, I can get out of this. And uh, there we are. I want to go into power like that, don't I? Absolutely. I'm trying to think and do things upside down at the same time. But it's now, I think, time for us to check out the uh, capacitive touch screen. Right. Here I am back again. We can now look at the uh, capacitive touch screen overlay. I must say, I do like the boxes that uh, DF Robot use. They're very, uh, very stylish, very classy boxes. You can't see it. They've got this nice sort of soft feel to the box. Anyway, you probably don't care about that. Let's get inside. I think it's over like that. And uh, oh yeah, similar packaging to before. Before There we are. Um, foaming stuff. And then, oh, a very, very reflective thing there. This is packed in. The, let's get those out of the way. Um, it's got the wire at the back there, and it's in some sort of shrink wrap thing. I think we need uh, Mr. Scissors, fortunately we're here, so we'll need those I think for this. I think we just cut, I think, down the edge like that. I'm not quite certain, but I think that's how we get in. Is that going to get us in? And yes, and no. Yes it is, yes that's got us in. And then, whoa, this is this is very exciting. So that's the back of it. The front bit obviously is going to get in time slightly finger marks and stuff because it is a panel for fingers to touch. That's the whole point. But the back of this has to go onto the screen. And if you're wondering how it fits, as I was wondering, it's easy look. It's got some adhesive tape there to actually fit it to the screen. So if we take this over to the screen, there we are, the two are going to go together, but obviously the right way round, that's going to fit in like, no it isn't, it's going to fit in like that, isn't it? That's how it's all going to go together. But fairly obviously, before I do that, I need to just take that out of the way. I need to remove the, the surface on the screen, which we know works fine. Is that going to just peel off? Um, no, that's just taking the tape up. Deary me, that's not what I wanted. I need to get the whole thing up. That's not good, so I'll have to lift it and hopefully get it off. There we are, like that. So that gets to, ooh, there we are. And the screen is now ready for its touch panel. And the panel is gonna go, as we said, like, like this. So all I need to do this is very much one of those one go type things, isn't it? Is to hopefully peel around here to remove the uh, adhesive covering. Take covering on that, come on. Off you come properly. Doesn't want to cooperate down there. Let's try it from the other end. Let's try it from the top, come on. Sometimes on videos, I can do multiple takes, sometimes like today, I can't. There we are, and so there we are, that's off from there. And now in theory, I need to match these two parts together. Exactly, because obviously the better they match, the better everything is going to be. So if we just Push that across a bit more like that. There we are, and like that. I think that is going to work 
pretty well. There we are, I've got my capacitive panel fitted onto my touchscreen. I'm very pleased that that's worked as well as it has. So I think it's now high time to connect that also to the, uh, the Panda. And so once again, we're back into the world of the itty bitty cables. Here's the connector on, on the end of the capacitive panels cable, tiny little cable, and it's gonna go into uh, this socket here. We have to again raise a little thing at the back like that. And then again, hopefully this will go into the connector. It's difficult to get it in, let alone showing you what I'm doing without getting in the way. But I think that's in there like that, that's okay. And this pushes down again, and that should be locked in place. So we've now got both the, the screen and the capacitive panel connected to the Panda. So if we uh, just put some power into this, if we get our uh, power adapter back in again, the power can go into the, uh, into the Panda in there. I obviously disconnected power and all the peripherals so we could connect things up, never connect up screens and things like that without all the power disconnected. I'm not going to bother with the uh, keyboard and, and the mouse this time, because of course in theory this is all going to work by itself. We do know though it's the wrong way up, don't we, this time? That's the way up the screen needs to be. This is the, the bottom of the screen, although I'm sure we could flick it around in software. But I'll, I'll leave that like that, and uh, I think we'll now uh, boot the thing up, see what, so where we can get with it. So if I just go to the, the normal powering things on the Panda, if I power it up by the, the socket over here, there we are, the board should come to life with little little things on the board saying I'm, I'm alive, flicky, 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 flick on my little, little blue thing there. And then when that's all finished, we should be able to simply press the boot thing there on the Panda, and the screen should start to uh, come up. And uh, there it is, look. And of course, this time we should be able to control it using my uh, fair fingers on the capacitive panel. You're thinking to yourself, Chris, You've effectively here just built a tablet. I guess we have. We've taken a single board computer, added a screen, added a touch panel. We've got all the elements here of a tablet, even down to the form factor. But we could use all these components in whatever type of project or whatever type of configuration we wanted. Anyway, if touch is working, I should be able to go down here and press the uh, icon for keyboard, and a keyboard will come up. It has look, and in theory it's active and touchable, yes. No application running to put the keystrokes into, but yes, it definitely works, that's, that's good. I'll just uh, go over here and try and bring up the main menu. I'm working from a slightly strange angle, but hopefully it'll work. If I click on, say, uh, all apps, we could go to, say, I don't know, let's go to the calculator. Gives us something to play with. Um, seven, six, eight times five, nine, six equals. Oh, look, it's got it right. Let's try the square root. And uh, yes, it's got that right as well. Isn't it amazing what you can do on a, on a computer these days? Of course, we could try something more, more uh, likely to be used. Let's try the web browser. Bring that up, Google Chrome. There it is, look. And it's on the homepage there explaining the future, which seems to uh, work. We can scroll around. We can presumably go to a link, future challenges there. Seems to, uh, seems to scroll fine. So. There we are. We've managed to get a screen with a touch panel working perfectly well and with very little problems at all on a latte pan. It didn't have to install any drivers or anything else, just plugged them in and things worked. So this has to give us lots of opportunities for all kinds of exciting projects on the latte panda. The latte panda is fast becoming one of my favorite single board computers. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to be abandoning the Raspberry Pi. The Pi still very much has lots and lots of uses. And if you want to run Linux on a single board computer, the Pi is still the way to go. But there are occasions where it's nice to run Windows on, on a tiny device, and there the Latte Panda clearly excels. But now that's it for another video. If you like this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,